and I'm back with another video. You wanted to know what you should pack if you're going into the wild. That's a harder question than you think, because what wild are you going into? The jungle is nothing like the ocean. And if you're going into a desert, you don't want to pack as if you're going to climb Mount Everest. It's cold on top of the mountain. So you should first know where you're planning on going. That way, if you're planning to go to the beach, you don't pack a winter coat. Now, I'm going to tell you what to pack if you're going into the woods. However, a lot of these things will carry over into most places you go. Like a tent. You kind of want a tent for pretty much everywhere you go, unless you're climbing on the side of a mountain and sleeping on one. These things? No thank you! I fall off. I'm a twister in my sleep. That's not for me, but if that's for you, well, pack wisely! Let me see. The first thing you should have is a travel backpack. Like this one. Now, what to put in it? Clearly, you want a tent somewhere in there. Food, water filter pump. Water filter prep bottle. 2.5 liter water bladder. Two gallon water container. Our more wood savvy travelers would have them all. Rope either in a bracelet or just the thing of it. Compass. You need to know how to use it. Tarp. Three season sleeping bag. A camping mat. Large mosquito net. Full size poncho. Camping stool and water to wood 10 liter bag. Ah, books on. Wild plant life that are safe to eat. And the ones you should stay away from. Ooh! Wildlife books in case you were need to know what animal just attacked you. This is a travel folding shovel. Cooking and fire ten piece cooking set. Flint and steel fire starter, hatchet and skinning tool, combo slingshot, a sharpening stone, hand chainsaw, multi tool with hammer. Machete. Good for cutting down and throwing things. Make sure you're not swinging around wildly, because then you or someone else will get first aid. And speaking of that, Fully stock first aid kit. Cause ne you'll never know what's gonna happen. Someone might think it's cool to swing sharp objects around near you. Yeah, there's always that. Travel maker. <clears throat> you should have clothing both warm and cold. Weather, change of shoes, not flip-flops. Never flip-flops. 
Never run out of power with your solar flashlight. Foldable solar charger. And wires. Power bank. Lantern. With the emergency beacon. Two-way hammy radio, built with an NOAA radio. 100-hour candle, inflatable solar lantern, and three-in-one solar fan. Then, leather glove. Survival with both. Camo duct tape. Notepad and pen. And camera, cause you wanna take photos. Yeah, that about covers what to take. If you were smart, you also have a personal locator beacon, which you just turn it on and send a signal to the ranger saying, help, I'm lost, and oh yeah, I'm right over here. Come and get me. You can send signals out to other signals, like uh, using a mirror to glint off the sun. Smoke signals, which is basically build a big fire. If it's a lot of smoke, people will come, but both of those will come with problems like there's no sun out or the fire is too big and now the woods are on fire with you in it. That whistle you packed will pretty much is, is a better choice. Hello and people will hear you cry for help. Hopefully. Sure, cell phones got a whole GPS thing, but battery dies, so on. In the end, the best chance of you getting help Fast is with a personal locator beacon. It isn't cheap, but it's worth every penny. Tricks and tips. One, starting a fire requires kindling. What kind of kindling, you ask? It depends. Sometimes leaves, small sticks, grass, and maybe wood chips. You'll need it to be dry, and seeing how there's no way to know if you'll find it dry due to weather, you should bring some with you in a small Ziploc baggie. After you use it, you got yourself a fire. Gather up some wet kindling, put it on a rock near the fire to dry out, and put it back in the Ziploc baggie the next time you'll need it. 2. If you bring matches, put them in a Ziploc baggie. If you bring a lighter, bring more than one. 3. Forgot your kindling? That's cool. You know those ramen noodles you'll have? Yeah, that will work. Just snap them in half and light it up. The dry noodles and voila, a fire. You can also use the lint from your socks. Four, you're cold? Make sure you have a button up or zipped up shirt or jacket. Then take some dry leaves, grass, pine needles, stuff them between your shirt and zip up or button up. Tie the bottom if you need to close it. This will in fact help you keep warm. 5. Need a saw? You can use a key to cut through small wood. It will be hard and it will be a lot of work and it will not be easy, but it will work. You can use this to help you make a bow and some arrows. 6. Duct tape on your heel and the bottom of your foot will help prevent blisters. And just one more tip, never go alone into the woods if you don't have to. And if you have a plan, share it with others so if you do get lost, people will know where to start looking for you. Now for some more, because you asked for some more. I love camping under the stars. It was once a way of life. Did you know that food was not easy to come by once? Not unless you hunted or had a farm. So what did they do that you can do now? Remember I said I have a book? Survival guides are helpful. Wildlife guides of the area is a must-have. But there is also a book like this. 
This book shows you what plants you can eat, what ones you shouldn't. And even if you can get hurt, what plants can help you? Sure, you think, I can just look it up on my phone, but I don't have a phone. And if I don't have the internet, that's not going to help you. And good old paperback book can mean the difference between life and death out in the wild. Dandy lions. When they are yellow, you can eat them. People put them in salads. Also, the root of a cattail, if boiled, those are just like potatoes. You got fiddleheads too. Sure, you're thinking, I'll just eat some nuts and berries. But it's unlikely you'd find fruit trees or bushes deep in the woods. So if you can't find those, you don't know what is safe to eat, you're going to have to eat bugs. So do yourself a big old favor and have a paperback book with you. I know you're like, where's my paper showgirl? But this video didn't need one, nor did the last one. So no paper shows. The last two videos were super short, I know, but that's the thing about traveling anywhere. If you plan it out, know what you need, like maybe an extendable fishing pole and tackle would be good to go into the woods to a lake or river and fish. You plan for every possible outcome, good and bad. There's no way the world is going to knock you off your feet, so to speak. Planning is really the smartest thing you can do. The second smartest thing is sharing those plans with others, in case the worst thing happens. People know where you went, how long you were supposed to be gone for, and if you don't show up, they know where to come and find you. Until they do, if you brought all the stuff you need and got lost, we'll pop up your tent and set up camp, baby. You're prepared and you can totally handle it. That's it for today, peeps. I missed you all so very much. Summer is just around the corner, which is a ton of fun because sunshine means swimming and hiking. I hope I see you all out there. Make sure to be smart and to always be safe. Bye.